If you clicked on this video, it's probably because your Google Chrome browser is running too slowly, consuming too much RAM, or taking too long to load pages. Well, don't worry, because in this video, I'm going to share with you the best configuration to speed up and optimize Google Chrome to the maximum. It's important for you to know that we are not only going to look at basic settings, but also advanced settings. Additionally, some secret commands that Google doesn't want you to know about. Also, before we start, I want to mention that everything we do in this video will be written in a post that I have already published on my website. In case you don't understand something, I explain it in detail there. And now, without further ado, let's start with this video. First step for this optimization is to have our browser updated to the latest version. This is super important because the new versions of Chrome bring improvements in speed, security and reduced resource consumption. To do this, click on the three dots in the upper right corner, go to the help section and select about Google Chrome. Within this page, if there is any update, it will download automatically and you will only need to restart the browser. To verify that you have the latest version of Google Chrome installed, the browser itself on this page will let you know by indicating that it is up to date and which version you currently have. In the worst case scenario, if you encounter any issues. With this part, I would recommend uninstalling the Chrome browser and installing it from scratch. In any case, I will leave the official page to download it in the description of this video. Now we will move on to the next step, which will be to adjust the basic settings. Here, what we will look for is to disable some things that Chrome does in the background or that Chrome generates. Without you realizing it when we are not using it, and this slows down our computer. For this, we will go to the three dots. At the top of the browser, we will navigate to what is known as settings section. Then we proceed towards and into system part, where there are three specific settings such as which we can modify in order to improve overall performance of this browser's functionality. The first setting is called continue running background apps when Google Chrome is closed. This means, as I mentioned a moment ago, that Chrome continues to run even if we are not using it. My recommendation here is to disable this option for better performance. The next setting we have in your browser settings is called Use Hardware Acceleration when available. And I do definitely recommend enabling this as it highly tells Chrome to efficiently use our graphics card to load videos, animations and graphics in general, such as for example, and smoothly. This function basically acts like giving a turbo boost to pages with multimedia content like YouTube itself, or pages that have online games. The third setting here is called Show System Notifications about Chrome Features and Tips. These are basically alerts about Chrome tips or features, which frankly, you don't always need. Disabling this feature would be my recommendation as it reduces distractions and slightly lessens the system load. All right, now we will move on to the third step, which will be the direct performance options that Chrome has. Here we have two main sections, which are memory and speed. In the memory section, we will find an option where automatically, if we activate this option, Chrome will essentially implement a control when we have many tabs open that we are not using. What it does is, in a way, put all those inactive tabs into sleep mode, so to speak. And here, my suggestion is to leave it on the balanced setting. However, if you consider that your computer has very limited resources or tends to run very slowly, then I recommend that you choose the maximum savings option. Then, in the speed section, I recommend selecting the standard preloading option. Basically, what this does is that Chrome tries to predict the pages you are going to visit and loads them in the background. For example, if you are on Google and suddenly perform a search, the first results will already be loaded before you click on them. This option is especially useful for reducing browsing time. But if what we are looking for is to optimize the browser as much as possible for the best performance on our computer, then I might suggest that you disable this feature. Try out which option suits you better. And in the end, you can decide on this part based on your experience. The fourth point we will see next will be to identify the extensions we have installed in our browser. And this is very important, especially if you don't know what a Chrome extension is, as they are basically tools or applications that you probably have installed and were completely unaware of. And unfortunately, those tools or extensions are sometimes the ones responsible for consuming high resources on your computer. Now to manage them, go to the three dots in the upper right corner, select the option for more tools, then the extensions section, and within this page, you will be able to see all the extensions you have installed. If you see one that you don't use, click on the button to turn it off or deactivate it. Or you have the option to completely remove it to get rid of it entirely. My suggestion here is that if you don't recognize an extension you have in your browser, then definitely remove it completely, meaning delete it so it doesn't consume resources. This, as I mentioned, is very important because each extension consumes resources from your computer and sometimes affects the loading of pages. For example, an extension can provide enhancements on certain pages you visit or new functions on some pages, specifically when you're browsing the internet, but ultimately they can end up making your computer much slower if they are not optimized or if they are not really worth it. Pop it up us. 
Alright, e now we move on to step number 5. And this is one of the most important steps, as we will look at the best advanced commands to optimize Chrome as much as possible. And I can tell you right now that this is where things get interesting, as these are the settings that can give you better performance for the browser. Alright, to start with this, the first thing you're going to do is go to the address bar, type the command Chrome flags, just as it appears here on the screen, and press the Enter key. Once inside this page, you will be able to see a large list of functions that we will go through in detail. To show you which ones I recommend you modify or change. But I must tell you to be very careful with what you are going to modify or change. And I only suggest that you change what I am going to recommend. Because if you change something that is not included in the list, I am going to guide you, you might affect your browser. So my recommendation here is that you follow my instructions to the letter. So let's get started. For this, I will be sharing with you the following page that you see here on the screen in the description of this video, which will be a post I have already made on my website. Within this post, I have left you the following table that you see here on the screen, where I share with you the list of commands that we are going to modify, so you can have them in writing. Additionally, you will be able to find right here a detailed description of what each command does, as well as my suggestion. Disable it, or deactivate it. Even from right here, from my website, you will be able to copy each command directly to the clipboard, so you don't have to transcribe it again on your computer. Simply choose the command you want and you can copy it directly to the clipboard to transfer it directly to the Chrome Flags page. The first command we will see on this list is called Experimental Kick Protocol. I recommend that you activate this as Kick is a protocol that Google uses to speed up sites like YouTube or email. In other words, it reduces waiting times on networks with a lot of multimedia content, making videos, images and pages in general load much faster. The second command we will look at is known as Parallel Downloading. I also suggest you activate this as it divides large downloads into parts like downloading a game or a large file in several parts instead of just one. The idea is that when you download large files, you can make much faster downloads with this function. The next command is known as Overlay Software Rendering List. And I also suggest you activate this because with this enabled, we tell Chrome that it can use our GPU to render graphics, relieving the load on the processor. And it's perfect for sites with animations or online games. The next command we will look at is also related to the GPU. This is similar to the previous one, but focused on heavy graphics, like in online photo editors or sites with complex animations. It simply makes everything look smoother, so I also suggest you activate it, as it is one of the commands that provides the best performance for your browser. Then we have the next command called show, out of field predictions, which I suggest deactivating, as these are form predictions that can slow down Chrome on slightly older computers. Deactivating them saves a bit of resources, especially on pages with many form fields. The next command we will look at is called smooth scrolling, which I suggest deactivating, as this option is essentially smooth scrolling while browsing, making the movement through a page feel a bit more elegant, but on older or less powerful laptops. It can feel very slow and consume high resources. Deactivating it makes scrolling a bit more direct. For example, if you notice that when scrolling through long pages, like a blog or Twitter, it feels heavier, this can lighten the experience a bit, and with this deactivated, scrolling is much faster and you don't feel small jumps or delays. So my suggestion is that you indeed deactivate this option. Then we have the next command called Zero Copy Rasterizer, which I suggest you activate as this optimizes. How Chrome handles large images, like those on news sites or online stores, loading them much faster and with fewer resources. As if that weren't enough, we still have a command from the same family as the previous two, but now for videos. And this is the command called Zero Copy Video Capture. When activated, this is ideal for streamers or if you record videos with your webcam. This command basically allows you to use the power of your GPU to improve quality and reduce CPU load. So my recommendation is to indeed keep this option activated. And finally, we have the Zero Copy Tab Capture command, um, which I also suggest activating, as it is perfect for sharing your screen during video calls. If, for example, you use Zoom, or suddenly record a video call of that sort, this improves the quality of tab captures without overloading your PC with high resource demands. All right, now we move on to the final step, which would be to restart the browser. For that, we simply need to click on the button that says restart to save the changes. And at that moment, Chrome will close and re reopen again with the changes we just discussed applied. And from here, you will definitely notice that pages will load much faster. Videos and images will run much more smoothly. And in general, your computer will consume fewer resources from Google Chrome. Well friends, we are practically reaching the end of this video. I only have two more recommendations to make. The next one will be the last for people who are used to browsing the internet with a medium or high resource PC. And if you're not too concerned about the performance or resources that Chrome might use on your computer, I suggest two extensions that will be very useful. 
to install. The first extension I want to share with you would be an ad blocker. And yes, as you hear it, this tool basically blocks any ad, or most of them, of course, that appear while you're browsing a web page on the internet. This extension is called AdGuard Blocker, and it blocks all kinds of ads, from the regular ads you see on pages, like banners, to pop-ups, pop-up windows, and trackers, making pages load much faster, and your browsing a bit cleaner. For example, on news sites full of banners, you'll notice a much faster load time. It's super easy to install. I will be sharing the link so you can access this page you see here on the screen to install it directly from my website. Right there in the post, you have the link to find it. Here, you just need to click where it says install, follow the process, and that's how easily you can have it in your browser too. The second extension I want to share with you is called Close Other Tabs. And as its name suggests, it basically works to close. The other Chrome tabs you have open e that you are not using at that moment. And I'll give you an example. If you're like me and open a thousand tabs while working, this extension basically allows you to close all the tabs you have open except the one you are using at that moment with a single click. What it aims to do is free up RAM and system resources instantly. And it's ideal for keeping Chrome much lighter with just one click. So now you know if you like any of these extensions. It has the download links directly in the description. And now friends, to wrap up this video, I want to share with you the last configuration, which would be a complementary setting but it also works very well for Chrome. This is basically a function that allows you to start Chrome with advanced settings. And it's a very simple but powerful option, as we can configure it to start with less load or tasks from the beginning. For this, we are going to create a Chrome shortcut in our directory. And to do this, if you have Windows 10 or Windows 11, we can search for Chrome directly on the computer, right click on it and open the location. Then with the default shortcut in this part, we will be able to make a copy and move it directly to the directory. Once we have the Chrome shortcut in our directory, we will right click on it and select the part called Properties. After doing that, a small window will open where we will position ourselves in the part or section called Target. In this part, the path from which the browser starts will appear basically from the computer. And what we will do is adjust any of the following commands at the end of the address that is in quotes. For example, we have two functions. The first would be to disable Chrome extensions. And this is very useful because without active extensions, Chrome runs much cleaner and faster, and I will have better performance for quick tasks. The second command basically makes each page run in a single process. This essentially improves the stability of Google Chrome. And for example, if a site were to get stuck or freeze, this would not affect the other pages we are visiting or using at that moment. Basically, each page is handled as an independent process. And at this point, my suggestion is that if you want to achieve the maximum possible performance for your browser, you'll, you can combine both processes and place them exactly as you see here on the screen. In your browser, modifying the original path and adding the commands at the end of that destination path. This, as I mentioned, works wonderfully for computers with very limited resources. If what we are looking for is to have the maximum possible speed. And well, friends, we have practically reached the end of this video. We have practically finished explaining the configuration we can carry out for Google Chrome. I hope you really liked this video, and above all, that it was useful to you. Please remember that all the commands, add-ons, and extensions we covered in this video are shared directly in the description. There, I will practically be sharing the link to the post I made on my website, where you have everything we covered in this video in writing, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video. In case you don't understand something, it will be explained there, step by step. And that's it folks, without further ado, I have nothing more to say. And we'll be seeing each other in the next video. Goodbye.